Welcome back to our channel. We're Chloe and Matthew, two wine-loving foodies who have set out to explore the world one bite, sip or slurp at a time. In this series, we're visiting every iconic wine region in Australia to get a lowdown on the juice, the people and what makes it special. Stop. On our adventures in the Barossa, we are hitting up Hentley Farm and this gorgeous 1840s cottage that's built behind us. We came in here yesterday, we were pretty impressed with their wine, so we thought we definitely have to feature them. And it's gorgeous inside, so let's go take a look. Let's have some wine. So do take a moment to have a look over our beautiful menu and see which direction you might like to head today. We've got some really amazing wines to look at. If you're a fan of beautiful reds, particularly beautiful Barossan reds, we've uh, got some really wonderful wine in store for you guys. But awesome. it's customary Hanley Farm to offer a complimentary dash of bubbles just to cleanse one's palate beforehand. Of course. Any objections? Why do we always have to pick such horrible places? What did you say about this? I totally missed the explanation. So it's a Blanc de Noir. It's a Blanc de Grenache and Pinot Noir. It's freaking delicious. It's so yummy. It's $28.50 a bottle. It's under $30 bottle. It's a steal, my friends. This is a lovely little company called Tours and Matthews. What's oh, good? What better way than to try the Jimmy Watson winner out of the Jimmy Watson trophy? Now we call this the old legend because Grenache is synonymous with the Barossa Valley. It really was one of the first grape types ever planted here. South Australia was settled in, from a colonial perspective in 1836. And the first Grenache vines were going in around about 1839. Grenache is fantastic at making four to five wines. And you can't forget that the first 100 years of winemaking in the Barossa it's pretty much all fortified. Mm -hmm. It's all in barrels, down on the steam train, down to the docks, on sail ships and carved around the world. This is a lovely opportunity to talk about terroir because this here is the beauty and the beast. These two wines are genetically identical. They are brother and sister twins. What I want you to do is I want you to pick up the beauty. She's in the lower glass and I'll tell you why. She's at the lowest point on the property and we're going to go visit her vineyard right now. The smarter you are on vines, they change their growing habits. So where she's producing quite voluptuous berries and lots of them, he's going, I might die here. <laughs> so I'm going to change tactics and I'm going to produce very few, very small, but super high quality and super concentrated berries.
Chateau Tanunda was established in 1890 and is the site of the valley's first winery. After a long and tumultuous history, the property was purchased in 1998 by John Geber who has restored the old lady to her former glory, both structurally and wine-wise. Throughout its history, the chateau has placed an iconic role in the Barossa Valley. No, it's, it's not that time of the year. Such a cold gray's on right now. I haven't really had just now. I've been just yeah. hitting so you're a month, six weeks out still. Uh, at one point, the largest winery in the Southern Hemisphere, Chateau Tanunda is the only true chateau in Australia with over 130 years of winemaking history. It was the beginning of commercial winemaking in Australia. It was still part of the British dominions, and the British were still thirsty. Blocks were hit over in France. They went out to the colonies and said, please provide wine. South Australia started getting together and going, how can we do this? Ross is an ideal place. We, can already, we already know that we've got grapes up there, up to the climate, it's Mediterranean. All, everything was locally sourced. We've got stone, which is from the quarry up in Bethany up the road. We've got bricks, which had to be fired locally, so it's the dirt and the rocks of the Brossa coming together in a big building. It's the birth of the, the Brossa winemaking from being little farmers to being actually for scale. Okay. We're one of the biggest exporters under Shadow and Not Shadow names to the UK. In the top five, we're one of the leading ones from Australia going into Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, and back in Australia, we're back in pretty much every major chain. He won't give me a key, but... So, so during vintage, uh, 10 tonnes of vintage outside and a couple of uh, 20 tonnes. In here, it's 11 3 tonne open fermenters and 11 1 tonne open fermenters. And it's all uh, premiums in here. Yeah. Chateau Tanunda is producing delicious quality wines across the board. With new premium winemaker Jeremy taking the lead on the high-end lines, these wines are showing real class that should be a requirement for you to try in the Barossa. Yeah, yeah it's nice having it. And then, like, all the girls are fantastic people. And just, kind of stories on top of stories on top of, on top of stories. Coming during vintage and crushing their fruit and not standing around waiting for all the sports. From, uh, from just standing you and then uh, you load all these books over there. Your truck might take them back and feed the sheep and feed the cows and then, nice. you know. But... Hello! We told you we'd be back with the camera. It is. <laughs> So this is the gin wall. And how many gins are up there? Uh, about 470 or so. 470. Yes. Granite Creek is a proud standard bearer for long-lived Barossa Valley red wines. With a plethora of awards to lure us in with, we had to give the cellar door a try. We weren't able to film much here as we just visited their cellar door which is separate from the winery in the vineyards. A couple of these of course came home with us, namely the Alice's Shiraz. This is just part one of our Barossa adventure. Watch next week for part two of the Barossa Valley. Like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out.